Hey guys, here's my brother's 2005 GMC Sierra extended cab two-wheel drive and he called me in a panic one day and said his truck was on fire he said uh, there was it was uh, sitting there idling and all of a sudden he knows smoke pouring out of the vents and out from around the glove box so he let the glove box down and he said he could see flames down there if you look right there you can see a burned piece of that insulation so it's kind of not the best idea, but we don't have fire extinguishers in our vehicles. It's probably a, something we ought to start doing. But he had a cup of water in the console there that he dumped on it and managed to put it out. So I just got to dry the carpet out here a bit. But I'll show you exactly what happened here, what caught fire. He had told me a couple days ago it smelled like a smoke smell or something. And whenever he turned the recirculate mode on for the air conditioning, and I don't know why I didn't even think of it, but I should have looked right under here because this is exactly where the problem is. Under this little cover, you have the blower motor and the resistor pack. And what the resistor does is when you change the speed of the blower motor here, it's a different circuit for every speed. Off is, of course, off. One runs 12 volts through a large resistor, which cuts way down on the voltage and causes the blower motor to run slower. 2 is smaller, 3 is a smaller resistor, 4 is a smaller resistor, and 5 is no resistance at all, so the blower motor gets a straight 12 volts from the battery, and that's why it runs the fastest. So they put this resistor pack, which I'll show you, right next to the blower motor, so the blower motor blows across it and keeps it cool. Well, the problem is these things can get hot, and I don't know why, but it seems to be a GM thing. I see it a lot on uh, buses and uh, vehicles with just a lot of use of the air conditioning, they get hot and they can actually melt. And, but usually what happens is a blower motor quits w working first. Uh, but in this case, the blower motor was continuing to work and the wiring got so hot. That resistor right there got so hot it actually caught fire underneath the dash here. He said he could actually see the flames. So, it was a pretty scary situation. My little nephew was in here, barely a year old, and uh, it's just another reason why you never leave children unattended in a vehicle, because stuff like this can happen. You know, fortunately, he was uh, in the vehicle when it happened, and not just the, the baby alone, but you just never know, folks. Never leave your vehicles unattended while running, especially if you have a child in them because stuff like this could be deadly. You just never know. I mean, I have never seen, I've never seen this actually happen before. The only uh, GM truck I've ever seen catch fire on the inside like this was, I think it was a 2011 Silverado that had a driver window switch actually catch fire. Um, those are the only two vehicles I've literally seen in person that have started on fire from an electrical issue like that. But my thinking is what happened is this insulation here, this sound barrier, kind of served as, you know, something to easily catch fire. And when those wires resting against it got so hot, it started a fire and it spread to the wiring and it barely just burned a hole in the HVAC box there. So I'm hoping I can just kind of patch that up. I'd hate to have to replace this whole thing. But as you can see, the blower motor is perfectly fine. It's this resistor pack here that gets hot. And this one got so hot that it actually caught fire. So I'm going to try to pull it out here, give you another look at it. And like I was saying, I hope I don't have to replace anything other than the wires and that uh, resistor pack. It'd sure be a pain to have to replace this whole HVAC box here. The whole dash has to come out. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take this out right quick. Right, I got the resistor out, uh, left the wires here. I cut them back, as, left them as long as I could on this side of the harness so that way when I put the new one in, I can easily reattach the wires here. But just give you a good look at what caught fire here. As you can see, it wasn't the actual resistor. It's the electrical connectors that catch fire there. You can see all that melted.
GM actually recalled a certain number of these. I'm not sure if this one was included in that recall or not. So I'm not even going to try to to unplug the wiring from that resistor because it's as you can see it's just all melted in there. Yep, that's crazy. What amazes me is how it was still working and it didn't even short out, especially with those wires right there. And they're practically touching each other. But that's it. That's what caught on fire. <sighs> so now, I think I can just patch that little hole up right there on the box. That won't be too big of a deal. Other than that, doesn't really look like much is damaged. Looks like it kind of started to. Let's see. Yeah. Started to run down there, as you can see. <laughs> it's kind of like a run from all the molten plastic, but. I'm surprised. For the most part, it's still intact. That's pretty good. Think we'll be okay with just a resistor and some wires. You got lucky. That's all I gotta say. You got lucky. Alright. So if you smell a burning smell in your vehicle, you may want to check that out before this happens.